Um, hello, hi, this is Angie. Um, yes, I just, I can see the light is very bright, but I don't think I can adjust it. Okay, we'll just have to work with this. Hi and Happy New Year, I'm really delighted to see you. Um, so this is going to be like the first video that I do of this year because I've been super lazy with everything because mainly um, I'm going to move to Vienna. Yay! So this is, have been, has been really taking up my time and but I wanted to talk about what has happened in the past weeks, what's going to happen and show you my goodies that I got for Christmas. I know it's very late but you know it's never too late to brag about what you got. Anyway, there are a couple of things that I wanted to address. First of all, I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Mine was amazing, but very quiet. Um, and New Year's Eve, you have to know, I really hate New Year's Eve because I'm a super, super under pressure person and I'm a perfectionist. And I sometimes feel like New Year's Eve is a time where people require you to Oh, sorry. Uh, require you to like take a step back and look at your life and what you've accomplished and what you've achieved and you can imagine for, an, for a perfectionist who really has very high stakes of achievement what she wants to be fulfilled that is quite stressful so <laughs> usually I really hate New Year's Eve however this year I've had some sort of um, like like epiphany because I'm going to be honest with you, 2017 really sucked epically, not only politically and internationally and globally, but also personally. It was really uh, my dog died, and my mom didn't feel very well, and, and and I had a job that I didn't really didn't like doing, and I felt very. Um, Anyway, this would take far too long to get into my previous job because, well, let's just say I wanted to bang my head against the wall pretty much every day. So, yes, not a good year for NG. Um, however, um, in autumn, I and my man, we went on a trip. So we went to Europe. I promised some pictures. I haven't uploaded them yet. It might never happen. It might actually happen at some point, but we'll see how, if and how I will ever, ever upload these pictures. Because just a short detour, I had this really great presentation, you know, with Movie Maker. Yes, Movie Maker, I'm talking to you, you suck. Um, so what happened? I put all the pictures and the videos to Movie Maker and I cut it and I edited it and put music on and everything. It took about three hours to do that. Then I clicked on save and the whole program just collapsed and all the data was like, I don't know, tarnished something, you know, just not working anymore. And I would have had literally had to start from scratch. And you can imagine that after three hours of wasted time of my life, I was not feeling like it. That is why there is no video yet of that. So we'll see, probably in the next year, if I ever find another program. By the way, if you know a really good like editing and movie making program like Movie Maker, I'm really happy for suggestions because Movie Maker apparently sucks. And they haven't updated that program. I don't think it's actually existent anymore. But anyway, digressing completely. So that was um, the trip. And my dog died. I think I've already said that. So returning to the major point. <laughs> it was, that was a long detour. Returning to the major point. It was basically that this year sucked so much. I was genuinely happy it was over. Um, New Year's Eve found me jobless, living in the apartment of my little sister and having no clue what to do with my life. That doesn't sound very good, but it is kind of liberating because you think the only way, well, hopefully, is kind of up. You know, it can't get much worse. 
uh, of course it can, but you know what I mean. So I think being in a very low point of your life is a very good start for a new year because you feel like, okay, I can soar and I can rise up and, and, and make 2018 a better year, hopefully. And it looks like it. We have, we're going to move to Vienna in about a week. I'm going to keep you updated with my new flat and things. It's going to be awesome. And yes, so that's that. For New Year's Eve, I also wanted to talk a little bit about New Year's um, resolutions. I hate New Year's resolutions because I think it's really stupid to limit yourself to this one particular time in the year where you um, resolve to do something better in your life, especially if this day where you promise that to yourself is followed by such a depressing and horrible month like January. I mean, cannot we have this whole New Year's Eve thing like in June where you actually feel motivated to do something. I mean January normally finds me depressed and then lying cuddled up on the sofa crying. Um, so so that, that's not a good month to start so that's why I've usually refrained from New Year's Eve resolutions. However this year I've had a, like a prolonged period of time where I was like I want to change how I eat because I eat a lot of junk. I eat a lot of chocolate and sugar and, and, and it's not because, you know, I'm fat or something and I don't want to be thin. It's more about, you know, feeling healthy, feeling full of energy again. And I miss that because I used to be like that and, and now I'm just tired all the time and, and, and I kind of conclude that this is mainly down to, to food. So, yes, that that is that. So if you want to do that with me you can try my plan I don't have a plan really but the plan is that I definitely reduce my my meat intake and I only buy meat that is really high quality which makes it so expensive that I cannot eat meat any, every day anyway and to eat more vegetables and fruit obviously and to only drink water and tea and only one black tea per day uh, I don't drink coffee anyway, so that, that's a win. Um, and yeah, you know, try out more meat-free dishes and stuff. And just notice I, on purpose, didn't say vegetarian, because if anyone were to describe me as a vegetarian, I'd, I'd go berserk. So meat-free it is. Um, yes, so, so that would be the resolution for this year. And the resolution is also, which, which is a different one, um, also kind of related to food, but not actually at all, which is that I really want to limit my time on social media. I've been finding myself scrolling down Facebook up out of pure boredom, and, and it, it's really, really terrible what people write. I mean, the other day, <laughs> that, that was really stupid, because I was actually getting my beef squashed like on Facebook with someone which I usually don't do because I think it's stupid. It takes a lot of energy and in the end you just feel really angry about someone who is miles and miles away and, and who does not play any role in your life. But I there was a video on Facebook of an old man walking a dog and it was really cute. The dog was permanently like stopping for the old guy. It, it was a cute scene. And in the commentaries, don't ask me why, I actually look what was in the commentaries. In the commentaries? In the comments. Um, was that, that that people had written like, you know, this is so cute, this is true friendship and stuff. And suddenly out of nowhere, there was a post saying, oh yeah, you guys, you know, you, you can't even think, you can't even say that this is cute if you're not vegans because, you know, as long as you eat meat and stuff, you cannot, you know, find a dog cute and then eat a cow or something. It, it was bullshit. And I really get angry with that, you know, because I think guilt shaming people who eat meat, that's the last thing you do. And and, and it was it was just really pissing me off. And and um, I gave her some, some answers <laughs> nicely. But uh, but 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 it's it's I think it's also one of the reasons I'm going to dedicate another video to it because I think it's highly fascinating 
why many people hate vegans is just because they, they, they can turn any conversation into them being vegan and, and about veganism. And, and it's, it's very inobtrusive, I think. I mean, I don't walk to people and permanently talk about eating meat. I mean, it's, it's just not something I do. It, it's weird. And, 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 I, and I just don't know, you know, I really have the feeling you could post a video of, I don't know, a Harry Potter book and, and, and someone would talk about veganism somehow. And, and yeah, so that was the first thing. Second thing was about someone, again, a vegan, who was talking about, there was a picture of a puppy or something, and they were talking about that they were the only ones having compassion because they don't eat meat and stuff. And that you have to have compassion for, you know, resources as well, which is true. I mean, it's true. Meat costs a lot of water. But that was the point. You know, you show more compassion for the planet. And I really got mad at this, you know, because what I, init what I answered in the end was actually, well, I hope you show compassion if the, the tank, the oil tanks have to cross the ocean to get your Asian imported quinoa. Um... I've still no clue what quinoa is, so please tell me, because suddenly everyone seems to be eating it. I have no clue what it is. It looks disgusting. Um, I'm willing to try it, but actually I'm not. So so anyway, enough of that, because I, I don't want people to feel offended or anything. It's just, it was um, these two moments where I thought, okay, I have to limit my social media like time because... I didn't feel good after this. It was not like, you know, feeling victor victorious or something. It was just feeling angry and pissed off. So I'm going to refrain from that as well. Hopefully. Good. So before we hit the 15 minute mark, let's turn to something nicer, which is this. So, so this is my Christmas goodie bag. There are some other items here as well, which I'm going to show you because, you know, no one likes people that are show-offs and, and I wanted to keep people at bay so let's do this um let me start this this is really shameless promotion and product placement so but I'm only going to say positive things about the items I guess yes they were all really nice presents so no worries about that okay so let's get started what do we first have in the goodie bag first of all the goodie bag itself was a gift from a dear friend of mine, so that it was really nice, nice surprise. Yes, I got a candle formed um, like a Christmas tree. I haven't lit it yet, and have actually decided to only light it next Christmas. So that is that. Then with Christmas tree candle, I got a lovely polka dot scarf. I'm actually going to put it around now so that you can see it. Okay, this Christmas was Christmas of books. My family is book obsessed. And what I got is the, the German edition of the Harry Potter cookbook. I already have it in English. I haven't cooked one single recipe. So I hope that having it in German will probably make me cook something. Um, then, oh, this was this is a great one. This is a great one. This is um, John Suppel, if only they didn't speak English or Suppel, I don't know, correct me. Notes from Trump's America. So he is a BBC editor and journalist, and he writes about the 2016 election, about um, his notes on it, and gives some insight into the whole, like, cataclysmic things going on around 2016 and 2017. And I've already read a little bit into it. It's very entertaining. It's very well written. I permanently have to Google words. And um, and it kind of reminds you of things, you know, with the Trump era, the problem is there are so many scandals and so many things going wrong that you kind of forget how it all started. You know, do you still think of the, of the sex tape Billy Bush scandal? Do you still think of um, the wall? Because we haven't, been, we haven't really heard about it in a long time. So he reminds you painstakingly, deep in detail, um, what happened, and it's, it's very good read. I would highly recommend it. Okay, what I've also got, because I love it, even though it's kind of really not necessary, is um, J.K. Rowling's Very Good Lives, which is 
pretty much just, you know, a print of her Harvard commencement speech. And it's very, it's very sweetly and nicely um, illustrated. So, so it's definitely worth a buy. And it's for me, it's just great because it's very highly inspirational speech. And and you can just, you know, you don't have to, to switch on YouTube and, and watch her say it, even though she's a very good speaker, I think, considering that she says she's not. Um, and you can just read through it and immediately feel inspired and better. So the benefits of failure she writes about, which is great. Then other books. From my mom, I got this book. It's Katie. So is that Ford? Double F, whatever. Um, it's called in English because that's the German edition actually. Because my mom couldn't find the English one. It's called A Christmas Feast and Other Stories. So that is actually a short story book on Christmas stories, which was very interesting to read because I I just recently published my own Christmas short stories. Uh, collection, which by the way is called It's Christmas After All by A.M. Reitlinger, and it's um, available on Amazon as an ebook. So if you want to have a good read, get this or get my book, and then you can compare them and leave a very nice review on Amazon, probably. That would be great. Okay, then from my sister, oh no, that's not from my sister, I got a book. Um, I have been told that this is not a big deal in Britain, in Austria and Germany, it is is a Dinner for One. So it's a, a comedy sketch, a TV sketch where, it, well, I don't, I won't go into it, Google it. it. It's fantastic. And this is just a book about, you know, um, what could be behind indicating that the woman killed all of the other people that should be at the table. But as I said, if you have no clue what Dinner for One is, you might be confused now. But you have Google, right? Good. I also got this book, which again is a German baker, so people from Britain might not know that, but she's amazing. She's called, um, I have no clue actually what she's called because it's a really, really weird um, Netherlandic like name, like Dutch name, that's what you would call it. Uh, she's called Annie, Annie van der Meikelokles, something like that. But the book is just called Sweet and Easy. I already have one edition and it features my favourite brownie recipe in the world. And in this one, she um, has recipes for the whole year. Like, for example, for Christmas or what else do we have? It's Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. For Easter. So, so um, there might be a nice, you know, any special where I bake some of her recipes as soon as I'm in my new kitchen because my new kitchen has a dishwasher. Can you imagine this? I have never had a dishwasher in my life, so I'm super excited. Ridiculously excited. Good. Then I didn't only get books, but there are some more to come. But I also got, and I love this, Fixer Upper season one. I love Fixer Upper. I am completely confused by Pinterest. I don't like most of the other TV interior um, shows, but I love Fixer Upper because A, I love the family. The Gaineses are so super likeable. And, and their taste, I mean, it's just exactly what my taste is and what I would do with my home and will do with my home. So that's a great watch. It's very entertaining as well because they have takeouts and things and stuff. Okay, then two more books to come. My sister gave me these. They are by Sharon de Dua Uto, I hope, or Otto. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Anyway, she is an African American woman, as far as I know, as far as I've been told. And it, my sister gave those to me because she was very inspired by them. One is in German, one is in English. Um, which are just short stories, and this is a book about how, you know, growing up in England, I hope I get this right, as a black woman, how that happened. Yes, so she, she's a black British woman, mother, activist and author. So 
and it's called the things I'm thinking while smiling politely so that is very intriguing I haven't come around to reading it yet because I've been busy with the Trump book but I'm definitely going to tell you how it is and I think it, it's going to be very interesting good what else is in the goodie bag not much left yeah tea always good Yes. Okay. Then, so the good bag is, is empty. I'm going to show you some other things that I got. Which are things that I actually gave to myself. Okay. So I got I got the Niffler. How amazing is that? So this is a soft toy, <laughs> and I know this sounds ridiculous, but this was the present I was most excited about. Because it's a tiny weenie niffler with a 90s, 20, 1920s um, coin in, in his hand. And he has a little pocket where you can put things not really in because it's kind of not an entirely, entirely solid a pocket. But isn't that cute? And I, my man, we've already adopted him into our family. And he, he's called Herbert, but, but we call him Herbie. And he gets along very well with our other bed dwellers, who are Duckford. I got him from my sister for my birthday. And if you ask, yes, it was my 24th birthday. And uh, Darby. So Darby is um, was the first one to join our family. And they all sleep with us in the bed. That might sound completely psychopathic, and it probably is, but... We love them. Good. I'm always most excited still. I'm 25 and I'm still excited most when I get Harry Potter related presents. And this year I got ha 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 a Harry Potter cauldron mug. I mean, how awesome is that? Look at this. Look at this. This is a mug shaped like, like a cauldron. I mean, that, that's like the coolest way to drink your tea. Um, or butter beer or whatever you have. But that is so brilliant and I love this gift. And the funny thing is, I actually gave that to myself because I, I bought it for, for a friend and long story short, I couldn't give it to her that way. And so I decided, you know, to gift it to myself instead of returning it because I thought it was so awesome. So that is really cool. I got mine from a store called Elbenwald. But I'm sure you can get it via Amazon as well. If you want to support the Super Mighty. Um, then, obligatory present, I got the illustrated Jim K version of Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban, which is so great, but I'm going to show you my favourite picture of the third book. It's um, a picture of Sirius Black, and it's really freaky in terms of like that it's freaking me out especially because I can't find it but that is Pettigrew Snape no thank you hate Snape no I'm alone in the world with that but yes so here we go I mean that is just awesome isn't it I don't know how well you can see it but it's really creepy get the book if you want to see it better um and I went to the Harry Potter exhibition in early December, where it was actually, when was that? It was actually middle of December. And that is also the present that I gave to myself. It's the book, Harry Potter History of, the Mag uh, of Magic, the accompanying book to the exhibition. It's really, really good, really interesting. And you can see some excerpts of Harry Potter and drafts that J.K. Rowling wrote in the early days. So it's highly fascinating. And then I also got the illustrated version of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Very nicely done. It's not Jim Kay, by the way, if you were wondering. There's a different illustrator called Olivia Lamenic Gill, whatever, or Jill, or whatever. Anyway, she... Um, she has a very different way of drawing, but it's very nice. So just to give you, this is the demi guide to give you 
give you a little idea. And last but not least, I have a special treat for me and you. This is one of the other Christmas gifts I gave to myself. Um, when I was in London, I went to the Kate Rusby Christmas concert, and you probably might ask yourself now, who is Kate Rusby? Kate Rusby is a fantastic Yorkshire folk singer. She's my favourite singer in the world, and she's also my inspiration when I sing. So check her out. It's amazing. The concert was beyond awesome. And I bought her latest Christmas CD, which is called Angels and Men. And it has a beautiful mixture of traditional songs um, and traditional Yorkshire songs, as well as folk songs from, from England um, that are Christmas themed. So it is really a fantastic album and all of her Christmas albums all of her albums generally are amazing. So that was that was probably the not the best, but among the best of the things that I got recently. And yes, so I'm as soon as I'm settled into Vienna, I'm definitely going to make more videos again because then we will have our own flat and everything will be much easier. And I'm looking forward to seeing you then and hopefully showing you a little bit of, of my life and I hope you enjoy it. And until then I wish you a great time.